but yeah so you we're yeah. going to ask questions at the end we're going to have a q a do not hesitate to ask as many questions as you can you know at the end and uh we will uh we will go for all of that but thank you so much eve for the introduction thank you really very much for having me today and obviously I've been doing quite a lot of talks with uh, many different, uh, uh, I guess, uh, people and organization, etc. So I'm always trying to organize something that is perhaps you haven't heard before, or perhaps I've not really discussed before. But um, I do love leadership. You know, leadership for me is one of those elements that uh, we should always constantly uh, learn, I guess, and focus on because leadership will allow you to grow your team, but also a lot more than that. And we're going to approach all of those subjects. So I guess for those who don't know me, I'm Valerie Delforge. I'm an international business strategies consultant, and I deal with clients on all sorts of levels, whether you have a large spa, uh, whether you have a hairdressing salon with beauty, I tend to deal with them with beauty, uh, whether you have a um, beauty salon, for me it's all about uh, really supporting you on an operational level, on a mindset level. So I've done that for seven years prior to that. As uh, lovely Eve said, I was, you know, head of spa operation for Steiner and uh, GM at Bliss, etc., where leadership had always been part of my role because, you know, when you have large teams, you have got to improve on all sorts of leadership skills in order to be able to motivate and bring the figures that your boss wants to see. But what I did realize is even on a smaller team, you know, when we have a smaller team, even on ourselves, when we, where we, if you worked on with your, you know, on your own or you're hiring somewhere and you're very much on your own, it's so important to be able to have a mindset that is, I guess, really protected in some ways. Because when you are on your own or you have a small team, it's all on your shoulders. So if any case, you might realize that actually, you know, I'm doing a lot, I'm creating a lot and, it, and no one can help me. And therefore the leadership of yourself, your life, your business, et cetera, can really suffer. So very quickly, the Delfos 5 is what I focus on when I work with clients. Uh, you know, I focus on the budget because you should know every cost, every decision you make should be a financial decision and, you know, no emotional decision to be made. You know, we really think about things. And actually the budget really reflects on what goes on with the leadership. So that in itself is interesting because if I know my budget, my costs, et cetera, I can really know what I can and can't do without stressing, without adding pressure on myself. Leadership, obviously, to empower your team and implement smooth operation. Reception, to me, is the heart of the customer journey. Without reception, you know, we are not uh, welcoming and, and, and really empowering our teams as well. So reception, for me, is really important. Marketing strategy to generate brand advocates and new clients of your, of your uh, on your business. And obviously anyone that knows me will know that I'm obsessed with retail because to me it's very much building loyalty and increasing revenue very, very quickly. So I guess today we are looking at the leadership. And when I was thinking about uh, leadership and trying to give you other points of leadership, because if you go on my YouTube, you know, we've, I've done quite a lot of uh, exercises, you know, kind of talks. So the latest one is with BAPTAC on, uh, on how to structure your day, for example. So I didn't necessarily want to repeat all of that. And I thought, mm, actually, when we look at leadership, we look very much on how to empower others. You know, when we think of it, it's focusing mainly on our team, but actually, you know, how can we lead them forward? How can we push them forward? But actually never so than now, we have got to incorporate our wellness, our way of functioning in order to protect our mind from stopping our growth. And a lot of time when I talk to managers, owners, you know, the only fear they have is in their head because there's nothing practical within what their decisions, uh, within their decisions. If you know your budget, so it goes back to the budget and understanding your figures inside out, the fear should evaporate a little bit. 
if you know what you can physically and mentally do, the fear will evaporate too. So the decision that we make on a daily basis are impacting on how we feel, how we behave, how we react. And part of, and, but, but now more than ever, we need to become the leader that we want to be and raise the standards in our business, in the way we function. Um, really, really important to kind of look at all of the elements of the leadership that is going to make you feel like a leader and in particular at the moment. And I guess it's why I talk about a lot about mindset. You know, mindset is the only weapon and the only friend that you have. And without nurturing it, you know, without preserving it, without really trying to work on your mindset, you will risk of letting all the outside factors, all of the other outside fears, I guess, influence the way you're thinking, the way you, your moods are, your feelings, and also all of the achievements. Because how many times when I speak to people, I'm amazed and I love hearing stories of what you've achieved. And I sit there and I, wow, can you hear yourself? You've achieved so much already. You've created all of this already. This is incredible. So no matter what your situation, sometimes we need to celebrate the wins, but we don't in leadership sometimes because we have got all of the heaviness of the budget of issues and everything else to deal with. Suddenly we have that time. Suddenly we have had that carpet swept under our feet. So here we go, you've got the time to deal with everything. So even though there's a lot of adversity, you know, and if, if it's through this adversity that we have to really understand how we function in order to be able to alter the way we function for the better. Because the more you focus on the way you function and how you behave, the more you will have a team that is empowered by you. And one of the soft skill that really is incredibly important and more so than ever, especially lately, is flexibility. You know, flexibility is a soft skill that is going to allow you to feel that you can adapt to changes and difficulties and overcome all those challenges. And we don't even talk about difficulty, we talk about challenges. You know, it's now that your, uh, your flexibility of mind is going to play a part in your future. You know, there's an amazing quote, and when I saw it, I thought, yeah, this is exactly how we should start feeling. You know, the best time to plant a tree, a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time in, is now. And when I hear all of these feelings that we're having at the moment as a leader, and perhaps you don't have those, perhaps you feel rather secure with what you've achieved. And that's amazing. And you can only improve on that, which is incredible. But perhaps you are a leader who are feeling a little bit burnt out with everything and tired. And how many people do I speak that are telling me, oh my God, I'm just so tired of everything. How am I going to make money? How is it going to work? There's an element of comparing, you know, that leader that's comparing, oh, but she's done that, I've done that, and she hasn't done that. And, oh my God, what do I need to do? And I've got a child, you know, how many, how many leaders do I speak that have ch young children that need to have homeschooling? It's very difficult. So it generates all that guilt. It generates a huge element of stress. You know, frustration is a big one as well. We feel very frustrated because we haven't done this. We should have done that. And the guilt come into it. And the comparison as soon as you're on Instagram makes you feel, you know, pretty awful as a leader. You know, we're a little bit fed up, perhaps a little bit overwhelmed. There's so much information out there. I don't know where to start, which is usually the conversations I have. You know, there's a, perhaps a blame culture that starts in your mind as well, that starts within your business as well. You know, there's an element of juggling. I'm juggling so many things, all children, all schooling, all having to feel that my 
team is relaxing at home and getting paid on furlough whilst I'm hardly getting paid and I'm hardly getting this and I've been working, working, working and it's not happening and as a leader, our mindset becomes extremely co compromised because everything that we have done for the first time ever has been, has been um, kind of put on the side. And I've put that partial because sometimes as a leader, we're so busy in our own thoughts that we're not in a present moment. And this is true for when you are opened and you have a team around you. Are you so busy with other things that your mindset is not really present and you're not really looking at what the team needs, what that person in front of you is telling you? So that partial mindset is actually could be true now. Yeah, I want to go on to my business and I should be doing that and I have to be doing this. But, you know, I've got all these things. So we feel very much, very much overwhelmed. So to me, there's an element of understanding that we are all leaders. We're all leaders of our lives. We're all leaders of our business. But we don't even know it. You know, your way of leadership is a way that you attract people to. And understanding as a leader that we do make mistakes and it's okay. The mistakes are okay. And the mistake, you know, we learn from it. We move on from it. We understand why. And I always went back when I did something that didn't really work or I said something I shouldn't have. Where did I go wrong? What happened? Why did I say that? Why did it make me feel like that? Before I go and blame the other person, I just look into the way I function and the way I think, because if I know how I behave, my behavior is going to generate a better behavior in front of me. So perhaps I shouldn't have reacted straight away because we're passionate. And sometimes when somebody says something to you, you feel like someone is putting a knife in your belly and you're like, ah, oh, really, really, that was hurtful. And I'm, on, I'm going to answer straight away. And passion is great. Passion is a double-edged sword, isn't it? Where... One minute passion is amazing because that's what gets you going and wake up in the morning and love what you're doing. But the other side is we take things pers personally. We really feel that everything is personal. And therefore, we don't make those decisions that are perhaps amazing for the business or for you or your mindset. You know, go back to understanding why those feelings or challenges keep happening. Why do I feel this way? Never more so than now should we change the way we function if you're not getting the right answers to the way you function, the right ways to the way you function. Never so now should we look at developing our soft skills to be able to, to overcome everything else. When I meet a lot of leaders, you know, all this feeling, the stress and overwhelmed and I open my laptop and I don't know where to start and there's so much information, you know, and it's just really feeling that I have to be a marketing designer, I have to know everything about social media, all of this pressure plus leading a team forward. Never so now should we feel on top of everything and should we really assess why does it keep happening? Why do these challenging keep, challenges keep happening? You know, if I did have somebody who's me, be, misbehaved and anyone that worked with me or heard me before knows I talk about Flossie and Flossie is your difficult staff member. You know, Flossie is someone that comes through the door and you know, oh, I'm working with Flossie today. You know, the energy is sucked out of the hall of the building because Flossie's coming to, to work and you know, sometimes flossy, actually, I, I need to understand why she's being such a flossy. Is it me? And I always go back to me. Have I dealt with it properly as a leader? Have I led her way of thinking properly? Perhaps I didn't. So it's really important to kind of understand that, you know, from what I hear is working on those seven elements that will allow you to grow not just as a leader but also as a as a business there's an uncertainty of your vision at the moment perhaps and i always look at the vision on a personal and professional level it's not just a professional level it's also the personal level 
revisit that vision, make it talk to you. And I think because we don't know where we're going at the moment, even when we're opening, perhaps the fourth, perhaps not, you know, what's going to happen by the end of the year, we don't know. So therefore the vision is very uncertain. But if you put a leadership vision on what you want to learn, you put a, a, a personal vision alongside this of what you want to learn, and perhaps at least know your costs and know your financial decision with your business, you've got a much certain vision of what you want within your business and your life. If you revisit the customer journey, obviously you're going to have to because of all this PPE and everything else. So we've got to revisit the customer journey. But what worries me in the customer journey is that we keep saying, I need more time, I need more time. So we've got to account for that time for cleaning. But there are some basic hygiene procedures that we should be doing anyway. And that shouldn't take you as much time. If you go on my YouTube, I do have a video on all hygiene procedure and you can download the hygiene procedure completely for free for you, at least as a basic. You know, there's a mix a little bit. There's a mix of the team support. So here, some, uh, some of you are very much, you know, monitoring the team and you having those Zoom calls and everything else. And some of you are feeling a little bit let down by the team. And some of you don't really understand why the team is not so much more supportive and they're getting paid and they're doing nothing. We need to remember that it's not a holiday and therefore we don't know their reality. We don't know how they're going through things. So therefore our role as a leader will be to nurture the team no matter how they react to you. Another thing as well is systems to revisit. So I, I speak to a lot of people about, you know, uh, SOP and systems and sign on operating procedure. Again, you know, I was talking to someone uh, last week and she was saying, I've got a, a seven year old, I need to do homeschooling and I haven't done my SOP. And my God, I, like, it's OK, you functioned like this for 10 years without your SOP. It's fine. Again, this feeling of of huge comparison that is absolutely no need to do that because you will get to do your priorities when it comes to SOP. Start with what really matters, with what is really an issue with your business and then build on that. But stop comparing to everyone else on what they've done and what you haven't done because that will really destroy definitely your mindset. You know, trying to redefine your staff journey. So, I've, I hear a lot of the staff journey. How is that going to work when they come back? And, you know, what's going to happen with their lunches? For me, I work on something that I call the staff wellness formula. So it's all about when the minute they come to me, even at, at recruitment level, all the way to when they are with me, the routine, the difficulties we can have together. It's all about their wellness. It's all about really making sure that the team is working for me and well with me you know the compromised mindset goes along the lines of having all of these issues in our head that we should have could have would have and actually that's what is starting to really compromise us and make us feel really uneased about where we at at the present moment and there's a lot of marketing noise at the moment a lot of noise on the marketing front we have all sorts of skincare and online and everything else and i think it's great but again, are you following something because you need to on the money front? Are you following something because everyone else is doing? Have you got your marketing plan for the year ahead so you know what you want to build on? Are you building all those consultation form and all of that around? Have you done that list to me that is going to help you focus on what's essential rather than being a little bit all over the place? The reason why I'm telling you all of this is because of the two soft skills that to me are the most important element of a leader. And the number one soft skill, and anyone that works with me will know because this is the first thing we work on, is the time management. Time management is the heart of leadership and the heart of your work-life balance. And perhaps you feel in none of those feelings before, but there's something about your time management that everything relies on you. Perhaps you're finding it difficult to delegate. Perhaps you're finding it difficult to find that time 
to work on top of your business. So you are constantly pulled back in. How many people do I hear, you know, do I speak to that say to me, oh, if I go to the salon, there's no way I can do any work because I'm just pulled back at reception or everyone wants me. Again, that's time management. I didn't mind going back to the spa or the salon and having people pulling back me back into the business because my, my time was so well managed that I was expecting it to be like that when I was in the, sal- in the spa. You know, when we work on top of our uh, time management, we're feeling organized, we're feeling on top of things, we're on the business rather than firefighting everywhere. You know, we have got a sense of achievement. We feel really structured and it focuses everyone around you. And that to me, it's one of the most important aspects because you are in charge of your time, not everyone else that is in charge of their time. Really, really important to look at your time management. The lack of time management And this is what's happening at the moment with some of you, perhaps I have children or perhaps I've got other commitment or perhaps simply are not feeling it. Do you know what? I've been talking to someone yesterday who was saying to me, do you know what? I just I just haven't been wanting to work on my business. And that's okay. But there's this whole element of guilt or frustration that leads to procrastination that leads to everything we don't want to be, but actually we're doing it because it's becoming a habit. And that's a lot easier to go and do the washing up than opening my laptop and think, oh, what do I need to do now? Could you show the slide uh, of the soft skill time management again, please? I'm so sorry, here we go. Uh, Hayley, I've just seen, I've just seen your little message. So yes, here we go. So it's a time management. You will feel more organized. You will feel more on top of things. You will be on your business rather than firefighting. And you'll have a sense of achievement and it will create a structure. And it focuses everyone around you. Now, one thing I need to tell you, perhaps for the story for people who don't know me, is, you know, I grew up, I feel really old when I say that, but I grew up with, being a manager who had to answer the expectations of my boss, but also a single mom of two children, two girls. And at the time when I, I became a single mom, I w- they were seven and five. So I only know too well what it's like to get them ready, do all of the pack lunches. You know, I remember my daughter at 7.30 in the morning telling me she needs to be a Greek goddess, you know, and I'm thinking, thank you. I should have read the notes because I didn't because I, even couldn't find the notes, you know, then going to work and feeling that by eight o'clock, I'd done a whole day already and getting to work and having 15 conversations that generates 30 things to do already on top of my 80 things to do on my to-do list. How do I nurture my mindset? And then I don't focus on retail because retail is the last thing on my mind right now. I've realized very very quickly with time management that if I have my vision that is blurry, if I don't protect my time, then everything else is going to feel on top of me and everything else is going to feel really pretty difficult and overwhelming. I remember listening to people, you know, that were very much into, and still now this very much into, you know, this thank the universe. And I do gratitude and I do meditation and I love it. And I love it. And I do it more than ever before. You know, but I've, I've done it for perhaps pff, 10 years, if not more of, I don't know, everything, every year seems the same, but I've done it for a long time. Because to me, it's a, a, definitely an element of gratitude of really being able to assess my situation and move forward. But I remember listening to this guy, he was saying, if you don't feel the gratitude, just go and walk in a park and take your shoes on the grass, or, you know, take your shoes off and put your feel on the grass and feel parts of, and I'm standing there thinking, no, this is not resonating to me at all. Because firstly, you don't want to go and do that in a park where I live. So I can tell you that for sure. And secondly, you know, I have children and my life is really having to juggle all of these things and not only have children at home, but I have to go to work and having about 50 children to deal with when I was managing Bliss in particular. 
So if I don't protect my time and I don't protect my mindset in the way I function, then everything will come on top of me. And being able to assess my to-do list and understand, right, okay, another 30 things to do, no problem. I can overcome because of the way I'm thinking. But the minute I feel guilty, frustrated, um, I will procrastinate. Actually, I should have put guilty, frustration, equal procrastination because we end up, and I'm fascinated by procrastination. Why do we procrastinate? We end up basically really feeling that, oh, yeah, I can control the washing up. I can control this, so I may as well. I feel guilty, but I don't quite know where to start anyway. So all of this lack of time management, lack of focus on, on this leadership, even so more now than ever, will make you feel really kind of um, stressed, I guess, as a leader, or feel like you've not got that accomplishment as a leader. As far as I'm concerned, there are no such things as I have no time. And then everyone's looking at me thinking, ooh, even now, you know, I think some of the guilt that I'm listening to some mothers talking to me and feeling like, you know, awful because they've had to, you know, I should have done this and actually I've got to school. Good, homeschool your child, it's okay. Even if you do half an hour a day on your work or even an hour a week, it's, it's fine. But when we do look at time and the way we function, you know, if I said to you, on the best of time, forget the lockdown for a minute, but if I said to you, right, I'm going to give you a thousand pounds and you can go on holiday next week, you would find the time to find a plane and somewhere to go to because suddenly that's becoming your priority because that's exciting. So we make a priority what we believe is a priority. And usually the priority we make put forward that we work on forward is the one that is really exciting us. Now, oh, I can handle that. Oh yeah, this is brilliant, I can do that. And the one that isn't so like a little bit, oh, I need to give something to my accountant by Friday. You know, that's what we kind of push on the back because we can't be bothered or it's just a bit too much or flosses us for holidays and uh, she can wait a minute. So we don't, we, we basically really focusing on things that we want to. So when I hear I have no time, to me, it's not about that. It's a matter of you make a priority what you believe is a priority. And it is about a process. Number one, again and again, I'm going to repeat it throughout. And actually, again and again, is revisit your vision. Because the clearer and the more defined your vision, the more you will want to achieve that vision. And therefore, you will make the time um, for it. You know, time management is a mindset. It really is a mindset. Time management will allow you to nurture your mindset. You know, there are three routines to adopt when we come to time management. And number one, again, is to clear and define missions to achieve that vision. So I give myself a yearly vision at least. I mean, it took me a long time to have five years. If you don't have five years, again, don't feel guilty. Just at least do the yearly vision. And then I give myself quarterly mission to achieve that vision. What do I need to achieve on this quarter? Because sometimes I have a month that's going to be a lot better than other months or some all sorts of things are going to happen on one month. At least I've got three months to, um, to really focus on. You know, we can delegate as well. And delegation is another soft skill. That's another key thing. Actually, I've not told you about planning your week ahead. The key to time management is sitting down and planning the week ahead, what you can do physically, mentally on that week. If you know you've got to homeschool your child every day from nine till three, let's say, but your husband is at home asking, can you have four till six so you can focus on the business? If you're a single mom like I was, I was, I was waiting for my children to be at, at, in bed, but I knew there were some days where I didn't want to do any work, which was my Fridays and Sundays. I would not, I would leave it alone. So it's just planning your week ahead. That's very, very important. And delegation is another soft skill. And when we can't delegate, usually it's because we're like this, you know, which is, I'm going to be the micromanager because if I do it myself and uh, no one will make a mistake, it's a lot better. But how can we empower others 
if we don't delegate? How can we empower yourself if you don't delegate? Because, you know, what I realized when I was manager and GM of, of teams, of big teams, I'm not Wonder Woman and I can't be here 24 seven. So unless the business can function without me, I'm always going to have to be on top of things. So delegation is another soft skill. Now, somebody said to me, yeah, but I have no one to delegate to, you know, they're two part timers. OK, but do you, could you get a virtual PA? That's not that expensive. And actually, that allows you to do other things. Could you get someone to do your marketing so you don't have to worry about it? Could you get what could you do in order to grow? So it gives you that time. And it doesn't matter if it's professional or personal time. It's your time. You know, a true leader can leave their business and it still functions whether they are in the business or not. You know, the second most important soft skill is your communication. Communication is the key to empower others and too much communication will kill the communication. I have seen companies and work with hotels where communication is very difficult between teams, you know, and it's all about, all about email. It becomes an email frenzy. Oh, but I've sent an email. Boom, ding, done it. Yeah, but I've done it. I've told them. I've put it on WhatsApp. Oh, that's my favorite. I've put it on WhatsApp. <laughs> put it on WhatsApp to me is like, uh, okay. And then what? How do we know that that communication has been the way you want it. How do you know that's not a negative no communication and therefore your team is a little bit, or some of them are a little bit disgruntled? Again, the opposite is true. Too little communication causes frustration and real misunderstanding. You know, real misunderstanding. So in particular with therapists, I found, because in hairdressing or nail techs or makeup artists, they're a little bit more on an open ground, I guess. Although to me, a conversation behind at the backwash is not a communication. It's just a quick, fast thing. But as, as a therapist, they go into their room, they're very much you know, into, into a room. So before you see them and really talk to them, it could take a little while. So if you don't communicate regularly, you will get frustrations for sure. You know, for me, communication sets expectation. It builds really strong bonds. And we encourage through what I call the chocolate language. You know, how really powerful can you be when you really make it enticing enough for them? So that's why your individual and team meetings are more important than ever. And when you do come back, when we open the door and you could start your team meeting now on Zoom, you know, they have got to be put right all the way through till the end of the year. In January, my, my managers were not allowed to go away because I wanted them to focus on their team meeting and on preparing everything. Team meeting, individual meetings, everything had to be in the diary because to me, that's a priority. If I communicate to my team really well, everything will go much smoother and everybody will be empowered as a, as a staff member. So, I mean, I couldn't do any other things uh, than this, <laughs> than this lovely, um, this lovely triangle, two form of communication. It either comes from the top, so from management all the way down to the team, or it comes from the team all the way down to the managers. Now I prefer that one. It comes from the team all the way down to the managers because everyone is then empowered. But if you don't put a structure into that, which is your individual meetings and your team meeting, then it's a little bit of a free for all, isn't it? But if it's like this, where it's come from you and it's the way I want and you send a WhatsApp because you're not happy with room five that's not been done or the chair that hasn't been cleaned, then it becomes a di dictatorial a little bit. So can you enjoy and empower people? Not necessarily. But as long as there is a structure, and that's why as head of spa operation, I was so much into my structure because the structure and everything else will empower others. And there's an element of accountability. It creates strong guidelines. You know, stop spoon feeding. And I keep saying about that. And someone said, what is spoon feeding? Spoon feeding is when I'm going to give you the information. As a staff member, I'm going to give you that information. You know, um, let's say somebody has made a mistake and... Uh, 
and you're just really not happy that they've done that. They've made the decision of, you know, starting a little bit later and they made the decision of having a bit more break. You're not happy about that. Well, I'm not happy about this because, you know, it's not the way we function, blah, blah, blah. And therefore it becomes that, it becomes just someone moaning at me. And you know what they hear? They hear beep. They don't hear anything. It's a bit like children. <laughs> they don't hear it. So to make them accountable, I'm not going to spoon feed you what I believe. You're going to tell me what I believe. So tell me, why do you think we can't do this? So tell me, what made you do this? How come you're always late then? Why do you make it? You know, by asking what I call the five whys or five questions, I get them to talk to me. Someone said to me, oh, yeah, I'm very good at feeling the silences. Stop feeling those silences. They need to come back to you with the information because you're asking the five questions. Five questions in coach, coaching allows you to really squeeze information out and understand what it is and the way they function. So accountability is very much more than ever has to happen. You know, you can't spoon feed it, not feed it all the time somebody. You can't give them the answer all the time. You can say what you want, but at the end of the day, they've got to start feeling a little bit more accountable and to empower others be careful of your language if you keep telling them off or saying something that you want is you enforcing you're doing that triangle you're enforcing what you want but if you engage them more by asking questions by getting them to talk by having those team meetings where perhaps you do nothing but have a good old chat you know really enjoying that voice their voices as long as you've got your structure and the way you function and everything is clear, there's no reason why they can't feel empowered. You know, accept their reality. There's no judgment whatsoever. There's no personal op opinion. I never have an opinion on everyone, on anything. It's all about a detachment as their attitude is not personal to me. If it's personal, it's a different matter. Then somewhere along the line, my communication has been compromised with that person. But I'm never going to assume because even if somebody or big flossy, I had some really strong uh, flossy in a big way uh, uh, in place and they will know who they are. You know, we can turn things around. And, you know, if I hadn't shielded myself to all of these kind of negative and uh, I guess sometimes personal attacks, in particular at the beginning, I would have crumbled. But I never took things personally because I detached myself from the business. I detached myself from what was going on and I made business rational decision and empowered them as much as, much as possible. I never assumed that it was all my fault. I never assumed that it was all their fault. To me, it's a system and the operation that makes things happen. You know, if we are more flexible in the way we think and, I, okay, I understand your frustration, let's talk about this. Let's overcome this. Let's look how, what solution we can find. You know, it's a solution finding mindset, which I really go on about a lot. Let's find a solution. If we start thinking of the solution rather than feeling really overwhelmed with everything, then you will find that everything is a problem. And when everything is a problem, it becomes really affected mindset. You will always have to deal with issues. And the minute I understood that when I was managing people I understood I'm going to have issues I'm going to have problems so the minute I understand that I just need to assess what the challenge is I'm going to find the best solution the best one for the business needs I'm going to find the solution for the business needs and to make sure that the person that is asking me something or being challenging is also perhaps uh, answered to you know sometimes they ask for things that actually when I listen to it it's not unreasonable but is it the best solution for the business? Is it the best solution for them? And we can look at the compromise, but find the best solution. And if it's always the business needs, then you're not finding that your, your emotion is, is there as a, as, as, a, as a cutthroat kind of feeling. Take a step back. It's all about prevention. When we think a bit like health and safety management and leadership, it's all about prevention. We're going to have an issue. We just need to deliver the best practice. That's it going to have an issue at one point or another somebody's going to be annoyed somebody's going to do something a client's going to, something's going to happen we know that it's just the life of the business 
So as a leader, I'm going to try and deliver best practice as much as possible. Some things happen, no problem. And you become more flexible in the way you're functioning. Yeah, no problem. That's a challenge. Let me deal with that. Because your time management is on point, then you can do that. It's always about follow-ups. And that's why I used to say to my managers, it's always about follow-ups. If you delegate something, don't wait for them to come back to you. Give them a date, give them a time. So you asked you, asked you to do this project. I'm going to want to see you on Thursday at that day at four o'clock. Otherwise, you can still wait. You're in charge of your time. You're in charge of everything that you do. Um, start with nurturing, start with reassurance. Uh, I love what I call the wellness blueprint for my staff. It's all about wellness at the moment. I want to nurture them. And you know, when someone says to me, oh, you know, they're 80% paid and then they're at home and they're doing nothing. I would rather that they're fine and they're happy and they're redecorating their room and they're safe. I'd rather that than them feeling very stressed. And there are cases where I spoke to, to my clients where, you know, some of the younger girls are not coping with it, with what's going on at all, but then being very quiet about it. So we need to nurture, we need to go back to that wellness blueprint. What is the wellness, the staff wellness formula, I guess? You know, the delegation is going to be the key to your time management, the key to nurturing your mindset, that responsibility as well, feeling that, you know, it's okay if I can't do this and it's okay if actually that person can do this for me and you know it's okay if she makes a mistake because I'm going to teach her so she gets better you know deal with your flossy once and for all how many conversations have I had about flossies lately you know oh my god this one has been a flossy for you yeah, deal with it now is your time don't go back again the way you were you know look at the way you were and improve on that otherwise you will constantly go back to the same wheeling motion and something will not satisfy you somewhere along the line deal with your underperformance because they are costing you now is the time more than ever to revisit all of that and understand that if you are going to you know be i guess nurtured in the way you're thinking and positive in the way you're thinking then surely we've got to be feeling that we're going to start afresh with different habits, different situations, different ways. I have a, a client whose two therapists suddenly left and it was just her and a part-timer left. You know, they, they, literally that was last year, literally from one day to the next, they left and I, whether they opened somewhere else, we don't know. How do we protect that? Now, for me, it needs to go back to how she felt. Why did that happen? It needs to go back to that, that basic point. Why did that happen? And definitely go back to the whole leadership element of the business. Otherwise, we keep making the same mistakes. We keep having those flosses we're not happy with. We keep having those underperformers that really says nothing every time you try and talk to them. You know, there are two, three ways to control your emotion. Take a step back understand the business needs and don't react overreact and sometimes I had to leave the spa for half an hour just to go and for a walk because otherwise I would make a decision that would be not necessarily the best because I'm reacting to something you know if your leadership is strong you will find that your emotions such as guilt frustration and pressure are completely eased so that's why your leadership in terms of time management communication is one of the most important you know, so what next, I hope I'm not being too long, uh, is <clears throat> let's nurture your mindset. Let's create healthy habits. Let's focus on your communication. I do something called own the day and own the morning. The morning to me is very important. The team needs to see me. I need to set the bar. What's wrong? Are you not happy today? Let's go and sit down for a minute. You know, maybe she's watched too much Netflix last night. Maybe she's had an argument with her boyfriend. Let's discuss this. Let's just move forward. Let's look at the stock, let's push the target. All of this on the day, on the morning is very, very important. Be mindful of other people's energy, you know, because I used to kind of go to work sometimes when it, I knew it was, you know, difficult teaming. I would just brush myself in front of a mirror and say, I am not carrying anyone. And look at myself, I'm not carrying anyone's energy today. 
I feel good, I feel strong, and I'm going to be very good, very positive. I don't love the word positive because positive to me is a bit like be positive. And sometimes you're like, I'm not positive. I'm going for a divorce. I've got two kids. I'm, you know, so how can I be positive for that? So I'm not necessarily a fan of positive, but much more about, you know, owning my thought process taking that step back, nurturing my mindset, nurturing how I function, having systems in place so it's not always all on my shoulder because I'm not Wonder Woman or Superman, you know, and I've got to have that protection and that delegation. Structure your teams and your, your team and your day, which is very important. And again, I've put it again, revisit your, your vision, which is one of the most important aspects of what you need. And in your mindset, in my mindset, it's all about structure, budget. Stop comparing. Stop comparing. Trust your gut feeling. Sometimes I speak to people, it's like, what do you think? Because your gut feeling right now is quite strong. Trust yourself. Trust what you've achieved. Trust what you're doing. Because by trusting, you're really focusing on your dreams. And actually, it's your results, not everyone else's results. Keep learning. Have a coach. Do all of the things that are going to really nurture and grow your mindset. Because when you can have that strong mindset, and again, I'm not going to say positive mindset. I'm going to say strong mindset and structure and everything else. You will feel definitely on top of your business that anything can happen. And I know how to handle it because I know my budget. I know my costs. I know how many people I need for, to go have through the door. I know how I can grow by next year. I know what I want. I know I can have my weekend off and I don't need to feel guilty about anything. You know, really important to kind of feel what I call a holistic approach to leadership. Because to me, more than ever, we need to look at that holistic approach, you know, where and how you work is very important. When you're going to open the doors again, you know, if you go back to the salon and I hear this again and again and you have a little office, I promise you, you will keep being disturbed because may, unless your communication is on point, people just love to have that reassurance constantly. So where and how you work is very important. If you're working from home and you've got children, I mean, my girls, they're 19 and 21 now, but they think I'm an Uber driver, seriously, when I work from home. So, you know, it's just like making boundaries is very, very important. Um, okay, so there's loads of questions. So work-life balance is very important and life is about progressing and flourishing. And we need to, you need to create a flow that is really true for you. And take time out. Have that lunch. When I meet people, oh, no, I don't have lunch. Why? Take a break. Have that lunch. Really start working differently. Because if you don't work differently, you will find that you go back to the same thing constantly. And to me, it's not going to be positive for you. And there's an amazing, uh, obviously, Maya Angelou, success is liking yourself, liking what you do and liking how you do it. You will succeed no matter what, even if you go back and you know what, it's a, it's a little bit going pear shape and it's a bit of a disaster, you've not got enough people through, whatever happens, you will succeed because you will have your vision of yourself and the way you want to lead your life. And that to me is one of the most important aspects and your time management is therefore one of the most important important element. So three books before I stop. Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, and The Hard Truth About Soft Skill by Peggy Klaus. I really have a look at those. It's absolutely brilliant. I will be on my YouTube uh, next from next week, from Monday, for one minute a day, giving you a little boost of mindset boost. And you can also have a time management module at a reduced price next from next week. So it's all on my website. Just follow my, uh, uh, subscribe to my YouTube or uh, go on my Facebook and I can tell you. So I'm ready for, for uh, questions. I told you, Eve, I was going on a lot. <laughs> no, not at all. Um yeah. Let me just stop sharing, maybe. Yeah, stop sharing your screen. We'll go back to the speaker view and we'll start um, with some questions. Firstly, can I just say sorry to anyone who's watching on Facebook who probably hasn't seen me. I was a little bit uh, late starting the live stream, so I think we missed uh, the very beginning intros. But um, luckily, Valerie introduced herself again, so um, I think you're you're all clear on what was going on. But yes, I'm Eve Boxby. I'm editor of Professional Beauty. Um, so we have had quite a lot of questions through for Valerie. While uh, I love questions. It's great. So we'll kick straight off if that's okay. Yep. And the first one here on the Zoom platform is from Rebecca Joseph. And she says, what would be your first and most important advice to someone who's just starting out in management? 
Um, she says she started, she's planning on starting off on her own with some other members sometime soon, um, but thinks she'll have a, a little bit of a difficult time because she's only 25 years old. Like, what is the kind of best way to, to go around getting started and making yeah. respect, respect okay. her? Okay, so again, it goes back to the mindset. You know, I was 26 when, when I was managing, uh, I was area manager for Clarence in, uh, in London. Tough area, you know, everyone's like, you're London, do you really want it? It was very tough because it was big businesses. We're talking about over two million pound businesses. So I was managing 40 year old women, you know, that were on far more money than me. But I think, again, it goes back to the mindset of what you want to achieve. And I guess for you, it's definitely developing that leadership skills. That's very, very important, which is definitely your time management, but also revisiting. There's no reason why you can't manage anyone in terms of age or, or anything else, as long as your, your, your mindset around your vision and what you want to achieve is very clear. So sometimes we feel very guilty, but why? Why should you feel bad because you're 25? You might have a more softer skill that is actually going to empower other people than someone who's a lot older and actually is very set in their ways. So embrace it and uh, definitely learn as much as you can on leadership. That, that, that's what's helped me throughout the years. Yeah, and obviously, um, I think Rebecca's obviously making a great start watching this webinar, so yes. yeah, lots of skills. Um, another question from Astley over on, um, well, on the Zoom platform, she's saying in this condition or during this difficult time, if we can't keep all our staff, how can we manage that? I think there's probably going to be a few sons and spas that are going to have to make some redundancies in it and work through that. What's your advice to them? It goes back to the budget. We need to know the budget inside out. We need to know exactly what are your costs? Why can't you keep them? Uh, also goes back, you know, I did a budget not long ago with someone who basically kind of said to me, I don't want to go back as an owner. She was working seven days, you know, five days a week. I don't want to go back to the life that I had. And there's a lot of conversation like that at the moment. So, you know, fine, let's do a budget to understand how. So it's all about numbers. Unfortunately, it's all about numbers. And the minute you know your numbers, you will feel better. And unfortunately, that's the reality at the moment. If you have to make redundancy, um, then that's a reality, but understand why you're making them. Is that viable for you? Does it mean you're gonna to have to go back and do a lot more work? And is that what you want? You know, it's, it's kind of choices as well, isn't it? So to me, a budget tells a story and the story needs to fit to what you want as an as a owner. So it's all about understanding and forecasting. And I know there is an uncertainty, but with this particular client, we've just sat down and we just kind of looked what happens if she's not in there. How does that work? And actually, yeah, she might turn a little bit less, but she would anyway at the moment with what's happening. So, you know, the, 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 the outcome was very positive, in, in positive, you know, was very much what she wanted. Yeah, so absolutely about doing your research and making sure it's essential as well. Yes. Uh, next question is from Joe Suckley. He says, I'm thinking that moving forward, I might operate as a sole trader and perhaps rent out my space when things get better. Um, any advice around this would be much appreciated. Do you have much experience in that or any advice around that? Are they salon owner or at the moment? Uh, it doesn't know. say, but I, I, I think so. It, it sounds like... Um, starting to operate as a sole trader and perhaps renting out space within a salon when things pick up yeah i mean i mean i think uh i think i think we're going to see a surge of sole traders if i'm honest i think there's going to be because of the uncertainty i think people will be like oh, okay i'm just going to do my own thing and see what happens um it's got these challenges you know, it's got its challenges. As much as being a salon owner, it's also got its challenges. And the biggest challenge is obviously the safety if you go to people's houses, another big thing. If you're renting someone, um, someone's uh, space, again, you've got to make sure the contract and everything is up to scratch and making sure that you know, again, goes back to the budget. How much can you earn? How many clients can you do to feel comfortable? And be careful of the hidden costs as a self-trader. You know, being a salon owner is very difficult. There's definitely more and more, less margins as we go along. There's more and more costs. We're here talking about PPE. I'm going to have to increase my, my uh, prices because of PPE and everything else. I don't necessarily agree with all of that all the time because it depends on many factors. Again, it's not one size fit all. So again, this is why I was talking about trusting your gut feeling. If that's what you feel that sole trader is going to be better for you at the moment, great, but know your numbers and those hidden costs. 
Thank you. Jo did just um, add another comment saying, yes, she's a salon owner um, making staff redundant as therapists has just been difficult to work with. So I think she's sort of thinking of starting back up on her own and gradually potentially renting out space rather than employing. Yeah, for sure. I've got someone I know who, um, you know, created with a salon two, two different self-employed. So herself and another salon owner are now two uh, under one roof uh, and they've got their own clientele and they function on their own. And actually, I thought it was quite clever. But it doesn't mean it's a solution for everyone. I think this is where we get a lot of confusion because we feel that we hear so many stories, oh, but I need to do that. Yeah, that's better. It's not necessarily for your own personal uh, choices. It depends on, again, your vision and what you want to create. Not everybody's going to suit self-employment. Not everybody's going to suit what she's doing. And we had to work out exactly how much she can make from it to survive. Absolutely. You know? it's not a one size fits all and that's why I believe in coaching because one size fits all is not once you know every business is not the same so it's all why it's okay as long as you know the hidden costs it's not all that plain sailing out there when you're self-employed and uh, as long as you you know you can cover what you need to cover and you don't work seven days a week do you want to go back to that yeah, absolutely. Definitely things to consider. And we've also had loads of questions over on Facebook because lots of people are watching live over there too. So um, I'll just quickly go through. There's one from Becky Waller, which is really interesting. Um, she says, do you think that you can be friends with your staff and also be their boss? How do you draw the line if you're already friends and you're quite a small team? I think this is something probably a lot of salons face. You know, every, teams are very close, um, often similar age. They, they socialise together. How do you draw that line and, and where do you draw it? Do you know, I, I mean, in my old, in my old, my younger days, I used to go and dance on the table with my teams, you know, no problem. Come on, let's go out and dance on the tables and then come back the following day. And I had no qualms of putting someone on disciplinary if I had to or, or performance management if I had to. Because, again, if you look at the business as an ent entity rather than your baby and you feel attacked every two minutes because someone says something, then you'll find that your decisions are a lot more rational because it's a business needs. So it's implementing systems within your form of communication and your expectation that's going to be very different. Diff well, the main element of you becoming that boss. So it is difficult to become, you know, to be friend, especially if you were friend before and grow with them. That's definitely difficult. But it's your belief and your mindset again that is going to separate you as an owner and making you feel more kind of in charge and in control. But yeah, I have no issue with be being friends with people as long as what you have in place is very clear. Mm, absolutely. So it goes back to procedures. Yeah, excellent, thank you. And um, another question here from Rebecca Joseph, what's the best way to introduce a price increase when we open up again if we need to? Um, I'm looking at a salon that's already opened um, and the price is already set with the place. Is it best to just keep the prices the same for now? So if you, yeah, if you have an existing salon, um, is it yeah, again, it depends a little bit, isn't it? Some people have done just on the price increase in February, so you can't really do another price increase. I don't think that's necessarily fair. And uh, some people have just done it in November. I mean, if you are going to do a price increase and kind of look at the PPE and you feel your clients are going to understand, I wouldn't look more than three to five percent price increase just to read on each prices, just to really give you a, you know, a little bit of a buffer from the supplier's expenses. And the clients will understand it's a couple of pounds more, sometimes four pounds. It's not huge. So you could do three to five percent if you have not had a price increase recently. Um, someone was saying they're going to do a, a, a kind of COVID-19 menu with increased price increase. Uh, I don't know. As a customer, I always go back. And this is why I used to say to my managers as leaders, you know, it doesn't matter what we put in place and what we put really kind of structure. It's all about, you know, how does the customer feel? How is the customer going to feel? Are they going to be happy to pay a little bit more? You know, of course, they're all desperate and everything else. And sometimes we feel, oh, the biggest, you know, the biggest, let's say, I don't know, Brazilian, let's say that's your number one, uh, uh, number one uh, uh, treatment. We're going to increase Brazilian so we can make loads more money. But that is also what I call your croissant, your belt, bread and butter. That's something that people come for, that number one treatment. Do we always have to increase the prices? I'm not convinced that it gives the right message. So again, it's an analyse of the budget for sure. And, and it's an analyse of what you feel your clients would do. And if you are going to introduce it, a lovely email 
And some people I know are not going to put anything, not going to say anything. They're just going to put that three to five percent increase on there. Um, I always like transparency within my business, so I would just perhaps uh, send a little email as a, a, you know on the reopening. We will increase three percent purely for uh, the supply to overcome the suppliers' charges, and yes. then make sure there's a menu next to it. Yeah, again, about communication, I think, with clients as well as team, that makes, makes sure. sense. And we are running out of time, Valerie, but we've um, had tons of really, really positive comments as well, which I just wanted to share a couple. And um, over on Facebook, we've had comments saying, this is mind opening. This has been my favorite webinar today, motivational and honest. Um, oh, comments in here saying, I'm so motivated. So thank you so much. I think it's really helpful during such a tough time to have a bit of guidance and, and have some kind of expert advice for people to, to get together and, and share opinions. So thank you so much, Valerie. I, I just want to say very quickly, that you know you have achieved already something you know can can we not shake the whole foundation because already you're amazing i'm inspired by people mm -hmm. i can't i can't stop being inspired because it's like wow look at what you've achieved this is incredible we just need to tweak it and make it okay and stop listening to too many things that is shaking those foundations all the mm -hmm. time and if they do shake those foundations that means somewhere along the line your structure is not clear enough absolutely and I think, um, you know, one of the early comments we had on here was I'm getting a bit fed up of all the doom and gloom. It's not helpful. It's so helpful to have ideas of what we can do now. So thank you so much for sharing those. <laughs> Join me on YouTube one minute to a day next week on the mindset shift. And you also have the time management that we're launching for £45 only just for two weeks. So join me if you want next week. And uh, yeah, one shift management uh, leadership kind of thing and I was in the position where you know I had to work on my nurturing my mindset so it's a work that you're constantly doing isn't it mm, absolutely I think we're all constantly learning and working so exactly. thank you and if, um, everyone else we will be continuing our daily webinars on professional beauty so do have a look over on our website for next week's lineup on professionalbeauty.co.uk and I can answer some questions we might not have been able to do isn't it yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, we're streaming this live to Facebook, so there's been a, a chat in the Facebook comments too. So if you're able to, to pop in and answer back them, and oh, answer your questions, if we haven't answered them already, that's fine. Lovely. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for having me. Thank you, Valerie. Bye. See you soon.